Processes of change always face resistance, and it seems essential to visualize what is happening in Argentina, where everything indicates that the strong change in direction led by President Javier Millet will have repercussions throughout Latin America and the world, echoing his speech at the World Economic Forum in Davos. Let's see what's happening. On January 24th, 2024, just 44 days after taking office, Argentine unions grouped under the CGT carried out the first national strike against the new government. They claim that the measures promoted by the president undermine labor rights and harm workers. This represents the first show of force in the last five years, as the last strike by the Peronist Labor Union was called on May 29, 2019, during the administration of former president Mauricio Macri, who faced five strikes. The last four years had an accumulated inflation of 1,020%, steadily eroding salaries and causing a significant wage lag. However, during the administration of the former president, Alberto Fernandez, also of Peronist origin, there were no protests, and in less than two months, the current government faces its first strike. It is clear that the reforms proposed by Javier Millet's La Libertad Avanza Party not only seek changes in economic and political aspects, but also come with a strong cultural battle. As he expressed in his speech at the World Economic Forum in Davos, since we abandoned the model of freedom a hundred years ago, we have been trapped in a spiral that makes us increasingly poorer. If measures are taken against the free market and free competition, the only destiny is poverty. Because as I said before, since we decided to abandon the model of freedom that had made us rich, we are trapped in a downward spiral where we are getting poorer every day. This is, we have already experienced it ourselves, and we are here to warn you about what can happen if Western countries who became rich with the model of freedom continue on this path of servitude. The Argentine case is the empirical proof that regardless of wealth, natural resources, population capability, education level, or the amount of gold bars in the central bank's coffers, these factors do not guarantee success. If measures are adopted that hinder the free functioning of markets, free competition, free price systems, if trade is hindered, if private property is attacked, the only possible destination is poverty. One of the first measures promoted by the president was a decree seeking to impose labor and market deregulation, along with a package of laws that eliminate most of the state interventions in the form of regulations, subsidies, and taxes. These measures represent a 180-degree change for the country, juxtaposing two absolutely antagonistic models. The question on everyone's mind is, which is the best for Argentina? On one side, unionists claim to represent the interests of male and female workers and oppose the government's measures. However, official data shows that employment has not only been stagnant for over 11 years, but the only growth has been in public employment and self-employment, mostly outside the system, highly precarious and with low income. At the same time, the value of the average salary measured in dollars continues to fall leaving employed Argentinians with a monthly salary of less than 320 USD. But the striking fact is that during the last four years of the previous government, when employment did not grow but inflation eroded salaries, there was no strike. This raises suspicions about the real motivations behind the current show of force. Are unionists genuinely defending the workers? Inflation is the main problem because it grows first and then salaries follow but always adjusts late and insufficiently. Therefore, all salaries grew below inflation, causing a loss of purchasing power that also shrinks the internal consumption market upon which the majority of the country's businesses and small enterprises depend. The latest report from INDEC, the National Institute of Statistics and Censuses, through the Permanent Household Survey, EPH, states that out of the 46.7 million people in the country, 51.8% of the urban population, totaling 15.2 million people, is inactive. The Economically Active Population EAP, consists of 14.2 million people, 48.2%, of which 3.4 million work as independent or self-employed, 13.4 million are wage employees, of which, in turn, 6.4 million have formal registered employment, 
and 3.6 million are informal and outside the system. 0.8 million are unemployed. This means that only 10 million people have wage employment, and their incomes are suffering from the erosion of their purchasing power due to inflation, which closed at an annual rate of 220% as the second highest in the world for 2023. More serious still is that out of these 10 million people with salaries, only 6.4 million have pension contributions because they belong to a collective labor agreement and thereby contribute mandatorily to a union. In the Argentine labor system, if an employee does not make contributions, they jeopardize the pension and health system because that money sustains retirees and health care, implying that, in the future and due to current underfunding, these responsibilities will shift to public health and state subsidies, exacerbating the problem. If we take a moment to look at the picture of today, in this long movie that has been going on for over 20 years, we can observe the situation of workers. Low salaries in dollars below neighboring countries. Decline in real purchasing power. Only 6.4 million people work formally, making their contributions out of a population of 46.7 million. Inflation that closed the year 2023 at 220% will continue in double digits due to the high monetary issuance of the previous government. Inability to save. Lack of access to credit for home ownership. Inability to invest. Indicators show that more than half of the population is considered poor by the same official statistical body. And it is evident that if we continue the depth of the analysis, the conclusions will be worse because everything is wrong in the productive matrix. And if it is not urgently addressed, it will inevitably worsen. The country's social assistance model was based on providing subsidies to those without work and the economic burden was transferred to taxes paid by the productive sector. The shortfall was covered by issuing money or taking on more debt. If economic activity has been stagnant for more than 20 consecutive years and formal employment has not grown since 2012, accumulating over 12 years without doing so because it goes hand in hand with economic activity, the question that arises is, who considers this situation good enough to defend and oppose any type of change that seeks to improve it? It is not the workers. If they were truly the majority of the country's workers, the president would not have won with 56% of the votes, motivated by the need for a radical change. What is happening is that union leadership is taking advantage of what remains of its representation to try to maintain its privileges, using a captive population of affiliates whom they tell that they will lose their rights. Rights? What real rights does an impoverished worker have, not to mention an unemployed person? The government argues that it is an unfounded strike, and therefore illegal since it is not approved by the Ministry of Labor, which does not validate the argument justifying it. Therefore, in its role as an employer, they will deduct the day for public employees who do not attend work. Unions are evidently among those affected by Malay, the Urgency and Necessity Decree DNU, issued by the President aims, among hundreds of new measures, to eliminate the automatic financing of unions by making salary deductions voluntary. These are called solidarity fees that workers contribute monthly to their respective unions directly and mandatorily. Unions worldwide are complex in terms of succession and power transfer. But the case of Argentina has examples illustrating that staying in office through unlimited re-election is a strategy that grants power and enrichment at the expense of the workers they claim to represent. Saying that they defend workers while annulling union democracy and establishing mechanisms for lifelong perpetuation and leadership closely resembles taking advantage of those represented to preserve the various privileges obtained in their positions. Scandalously rich union leaders representing increasingly poor workers. Let us introduce a selection of the most prominent, although the list is much longer. Luis Barrio Nuevo, gastronomic workers, 43 years. Omar Viviani, taxi drivers union, 41 years. Amadeo Genta, SUTECBA, municipal workers. 41 years. Guillermo Pereira, private oil workers, 40 years. Rodolfo Dare, food industry, 37 years. 
and his brother, Hector Dare, CGT and Health, 40 years. Carlos West Ocampo, Health Workers, 39 years. Armando Cavalieri, Commerce Employees, 36 years. Jose Luis Lingeri, Sanitation Workers, 39 years. Hugo Moyano, Truck Drivers Federation, 35 years. Roberto Baradel, S-U-T-E-B-A, Buenos Aires Teachers, 20 years. Gerardo Martinez, UOCRA, Construction, 32 years. Andreas Rodriguez, UPCN, National Civil Servants, 34 years. Julio Pumato, Judicial Employees, 33 years. In conclusion, this strike called by the organization that brings together the unions is nothing more than a cultural battle in which the factions are, on one side, the forces of change, and on the other, the resistance to it. The real opponents do not show themselves and use the figure of the workers, whom they claim to represent, acting corporatively, using the resources taken from each other in the form of union fees, contributions to their health insurance, and compulsory contributions to federations that never fall below 1% of their salary to mobilize them through a systematic manipulation of constant messages that make them believe they have much to lose if the market is deregulated. This is how they manage to bring them en masse to the streets to protest against a system that a majority neither understands nor knows. No honest citizen would refuse to work for a company that offers them a proposal to grow and develop, adding value within it, and likewise, no company would refuse to hire personnel if the risks involved in hiring employees were removed. The problem is generated by intermediaries with their interests, not the market that needs and wants to grow. A Symbolic Battle January 24th is the first symbolic battle, but many more will come. The necessary and unavoidable modernization process to grow as a country involves getting rid of the parasitic sector of society that lives off it but does not contribute. It requires finding a modern and suitable labor representation model so that unionism becomes a partner in growth, aligning its objectives and those of workers with those of companies and the country. The stagnant figures of current union leaders only represent their own personal situation, aiming, as always, to continue holding on to their historical privileges based on conquests achieved as a Peronist union movement far back in the 1940s. Their selfishness leads them to impose their personal interests above the individual rights of workers and the needs of labor and economic modernization that the country needs to overcome its crisis. Their model proposes nothing viable. On the contrary, they promote the continuity of a status quo that only benefits leaders and refers to the obligatory ritual of reverence for the figures of Perón and Eva Perón, true parents of unionism and blind militancy, lacking a macroeconomic vision and understanding of the variables that regulate work 80 years after the slogans they continue to repeat anachronistically. Peronism always sees an enormous past ahead. On the other side is the force of leadership of a president who received a vote of confidence to carry out a libertarian vision, explicitly praising individual freedoms. However, he is compelled by economic urgency and social fragility to accelerate a transition process that will be painful but healing. No economy at any scale, family, companies, countries, can go wrong if it spends less than it earns. The most complicated aspect of the country is the internal adjustments that must be made to achieve this simple truth. Spend less than you have in income. This simple truth points to the sought-after fiscal balance, the real challenge of building a country. The government team is executing at a record pace that promises of adjustment and change explained through the campaign for which they were elected. However, everyone seems to agree with the adjustment as long as someone else has to do it. The entire country is closely watching every measure and making adjustments of all kinds to navigate a period that everyone knows will be challenging. However, those who were beneficiaries of an irresponsible state that spent without much criteria and with the sole objective of perpetuating itself electorally for another term are now beginning to understand that the necessary change also affects their pockets. 
Measures of all kinds involving more expensive transportation, the suspension of subsidies and tariffs, the cutting of some scholarships, the non-renewal of non-essential public positions, the reduction of contributions to culture, research without a project, and a multitude of unnecessary expenses in a true economic emergency, as serious as it is unknown to the naive who received it cheerfully. The majority of the population grits their teeth and waits for it to pass quickly, but there is another group that may not be ready to bear the changes and their consequences so abruptly. Those who are determined to maintain their privileges, even as a minority, use manipulative information to perpetuate themselves as they always have. These true privileged individuals who do not contribute value to society but live off it will demonstrate their shock power trying to hinder an inevitable national emergency change. Some will confront by promoting street mobilizations, and others will do it from their seats in Congress, highlighting what everyone in Argentina has been asking. Who is the caste that has been benefiting at the expense of the rest of the population? It is becoming easier to see who is pulling the invisible strings, and when the veils are completely lifted, the real faces of the architects of the decline of a country that has all its development potential placed in the wrong hands will be revealed. When finally, a hopeful leadership emerges. Determined to reverse such a disastrous model, they insist on holding on with all the resources at their disposal. From the position of those who govern us, they had already made it very clear in the campaign. Bueno, para el kirchnerismo, justicia, derechos humanos y transparencia es la muerte del fiscal Nisman, los bolsos llenos de dólares de López, el vacunatorio VIP, Insaurralde y sus yates, la AFI paralela de Rossi y compañía. Después contanos, Rossi, cómo es espiar jueces. Las tarjetas de débito de Chocolate Rigó y del concejal de Massa. La tragedia del tren de Once y las coimas de Jaime. Emerenciano Cena en el Chaco, el pacto con Irán, las fiestas en Olivos mientras todos nosotros estábamos encerrados, los juicios por, las por la expropiación de IPF que gracias a Kisilov nos van a costar 16 mil millones de dólares, sueños compartidos, el curro de tu amiga Eve de Bonafini, el plan Cunita, la causa de los cuadernos, Aníbal Fernández y la efedrina, el misil, las balas y los fusiles que se te perdieron, también volvamos sobre eso un poco más tarde, el dólar futuro, Milagro Sala en Jujuy, los sobreprecios de Aiza en la compra de las camionetas Cangú, habría que preguntarle a Malena Massa qué pasó con eso, la compra de barbijos con sobreprecio en plena cuarentena, la bajeza de usar un momento crítico para todos los argentinos para hacer negocios. La causa Otesur y los sauces, Chicone y Vudú. La compra millonaria de viandas en el Ministerio de la Mujer. Lázaro Báez. Los muertos de las inundaciones de La Plata. Todo esto nos lleva a decir, ¿querés como argentino continuidad o cambio? Continuity or change. Argentines have already chosen their preference but will they be able to sustain their decision to achieve it? 